today's Decoder episode, we're doing something a little more food centric instead of tech, just for something different. But don't worry, there is still definitely some tech in this video. This is the Smart Stand Mixer by GE Profile, who I partnered with to help make this video. But this Smart Mixer actually won a CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, Innovation Award. And it makes sense. It is definitely one of the coolest mixers I've ever seen. It has a sleek design, also, Matte black is always a good call in my book. Notification ring LED so you can see how the mixing is going from across the room and more, which we'll get to later. But for now, this all felt like a good opportunity to talk about a still pretty nerdy topic at least, the science of baking. Now today, I have my friend and avid baker here, Hannah, helping me. Because as any of you know, baking is very like precise science and well, I'm gonna be filming myself while baking and that's, that's kind of a recipe for disaster. So when you see much better looking hands in the shots, those th those are hers. Now, essentially all baked goods work on the same principles and an understanding of the basics of those principles can demystify baking and help you understand exactly what is happening so that you can get better at any type of baking going forward. Okay, so fun fact, you can make everything from crusty bread to moist cakes to chewy bagels, all using similar ingredients of flour, sugar, eggs, and butter all in different proportions, as well as some added things like yeast and baking soda. Now, all of these main ingredients in baking serve very specific, very sciencey purposes. So firstly, flour, which is a grain that's ground down to a powder. It's what gives structure to the baked good, and it contains two proteins called glutenin and gliadin, which together make gluten. And we have starch molecules as well. Now, when the flour is dry, the gluten proteins don't really move or react, but by adding water to the flour, it causes the starch molecules to expand and the gluten proteins to untangle and start to move. Then mixing that ties the proteins back together in a new structure and kneading or working the dough causes it to create a web of these structures. Now these structures give the dough this unique elastic property, which is important for baking. Now, the more you knead the dough, the more of these webs are formed, the stronger they become, and the tougher the dough becomes. This GE Profile Smart Stand Mixer has its Smart HQ app that you can download guided recipes for various baked goods and other items and follow along super easily. But also, the mixer can use AutoSense recipes, which is kind of crazy. Basically, it knows what you put in the mixing bowl and has a torque sensor to know how tough it is at any moment to get it to the exact point that it needs to be based on the recipe, and then it stops automatically so that you don't over knead your dough, for example, and ruin it. And if you wanna do it more manually and have a recipe that you're following, there's usually a time on the recipe for kneading, and you can just spin the dial on the mixer to have it start a timer for you and turn off automatically when that's done. Next, the amount of water, or whatever water-based liquid is in the recipe, is important. The more water, the faster the gluten is formed, and this then results in drier dough being more firm, and wetter dough would be stickier. Now, speaking of, if you're working with a stickier dough, this mixer actually has a reverse mode to untangle the dough to help with catching more ingredients in the bowl. Now, this smart mixer actually has a built-in scale, which makes adding all of the ingredients in your baking recipe way easier. You no longer have to measure everything outside of the mixing bowl. You can just do it all in it with tearing after each ingredient. This alone is worth buying the mixer in my mind. Like, why has this not been a thing yet on stand mixers? Huh? Then in baking, we usually have a shortening ingredient, which is basically a fat. Think butter or oil or some other fat. The purpose of these in a baked good is to limit gluten formation as the fat repels the water that you add after it that we then need to form gluten. Now it's called shortening because it shortens the gluten strands. This results in softer and more tender baked goods when you add a shortening of some sort. Now eggs are used to bind ingredients together in general, and also they can provide structure since they are liquid when raw, but when cooked, they turn into a solid. Also, each part of the egg, the whites and the yolk, have separate uses as well. The yolks contain nutrients and fat and add to flavor and texture, but they also contain an emulsifier called lecithin, which can bring water and oil-based ingredients together instead of their usual repelling each other so that they are more distributed evenly over the batter. Speaking of emulsifying, the GE Profile Smart Sand Mixer can also turn things up to 11 on the speed. If you can see, yeah, the numbers all go to 11. It's able to go a lot faster than your usual stand mixer thanks to a pretty high-tech digital brushless motor inside that is engineered to run at low temperatures for long periods of time. And it can go a lot faster because of that without, you know, trying to jump off your counter. It's really good mayo, actually. 
Now, you might need to change attachments on your mixer depending on the application for whatever you're baking. This hook is for kneading dough versus this whisk for whipping liquids or egg whites and a beater for batters and frostings. All of which this mixer comes with in addition to its seven quart mixing bowl. But something I thought was clever was that you can easily swap them all with one click instead of twisting them on and off, which is kind of a pain sometimes on other mixers. All right, next up we have sugar and it's added for the sweetness obviously, but also manipulates water because it is hygroscopic, which means it holds on to the moisture around it, which when mixed with flour also slows that gluten production since they're both kind of competing for the water and sugar will take more of it than the equivalent same amount of flour. Also, in a process called creaming, sugar is added to room temperature butter and mixed. The sharp edges of the sugar crystals cut holes in the butter and introduced air to help baked goods rise slightly, but also create a much creamier texture to the end product. A lot of times, you'll find that in cookies. Then we have leaveners, or ingredients to make the dough rise when needed in a baked good. Now, the first of these is yeast. This is an alive microorganism that feeds on sugar, and when it does, it produces alcohol and carbon dioxide as a gas. Now, added sugar in a recipe speeds this up and produces more, but even without it, the yeast feeds off of the starch in the flour as it can break it down into sugars, which also, of course, adds flavor. Now, when we add yeast to a glutinous dough, the gluten network we created is strong enough to hold in the carbon dioxide, and that's what causes bread to rise, for example, and why you have hollow areas in your baked goods. Now, the alcohol that it produces is actually burned off during baking, but it and the yeast itself will also add to flavor. Now, besides yeast, you can also use baking soda and baking powder as leaveners. Now, baking soda, or sodium bicarbonate, is a chemical, a salt really, that when mixed with an acid and heat, it produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct, much like yeast. Baking powder is just baking soda mixed with a dry acid that when heated up, it turns an acid back into a liquid. The acid and the baking soda mix like normal, and it's just a way of creating the reaction without needing an additional acid in the mix. Also, to be clear, these are not interchangeable in recipes, just in case you weren't sure. And when you're done making the dough or batter, we can then put it in the oven and we can take all of our commercial grade stainless steel attachments and put those in the dishwasher since they're thankfully dishwasher safe. And then we can focus on what happens in the oven during the baking process. So at around 32 degrees Celsius, 90 Fahrenheit, the fats will begin to melt, releasing some air and water and making high fat content items more fluid, really. This is when batters and cookies start to spread out. This is also when any trapped air or gas like our carbon dioxide begins to expand in volume and we get rising. Now at 60 degrees Celsius, 140 Fahrenheit, eggs and gluten proteins begin to set and starch granules begin to swell with water and gelatinize. This is when the structure of our baked good kind of really solidifies. At 100 degrees Celsius, 212 Fahrenheit, water evaporates. So any water will turn into steam and try to escape our baked good. It will also partially dry it out and even cause a small rise in items that don't have a leavener. Again, like cookies. At 149 degrees Celsius, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, sugars start to caramelize and Maillard browning is well underway. This is a complex chemical process responsible for the browning flavor on any number of foods from steak to baked goods to whatever. And we start to see golden brown colors. Come on. Not bad. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'm just gonna keep eating these. I'm not having had dinner yet. This is dinner now. There you guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh bit different of a video, obviously. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. Also, shout again to GE Profile for sponsoring this video. You can check out the mixer if you're curious about it at the link below. And now I'm going to just keep eating these cookies and pass out in a sugar coma. Good night. Now you might notice that specific... <laughs> 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 <laughs>